Hey everybody. Sorry for the late start. I had a little trouble with my streaming software, but I think everything is connected and coming through now, so welcome aboard. Oops. Okay. Okay. We're in business now. Today we're going to look at Ansible. Ansible. Automation for everybody. So, I call this stream Learning Ansible from Scratch because I really... My knowledge of Ansible is very, very limited. I have a very high level and distant understanding of Ansible. I know a little bit about it, but I've never actually implemented the, a playbook or anything, so we're going to kind of start from scratch and go through as if I'd never used it before. So we're going to start by installing it, and actually I do believe you can just install it with pip. So let's make a directory called uh, Ansible examples. And let's go in there and let's make a new virtual environment with Python 3 and just call it VN. And if there is anybody out there, maybe if you could just let me know that everything's coming through clearly. I was having a little issue earlier. I think it was just the stream key. But we're just going to activate our virtual environment now. Uh, source VM then activate. And actually, um, yeah, that's fine. So we do pip list. We shouldn't see anything except the basics. So we'll try pip install Ansible. All right. It's a uh, beautiful array of progress bars. Okay, so while we're here, what do they say on their website about it? Mm, their CSS is, there we go. Simple agentless IT automation. And agentless just means that you don't have to install a program on every computer, so in a lot of cases Ansible is good for managing a large number of hosts. For example, let's say you want to connect and run a backup script and an apt update across a hundred servers. Well, Ansible will help you do that and manage it and everything. Now, in a lot of other cases, you have to install a program on each server to run the updates. But with Ansible, you can run it all from your laptop or whatever, and you don't need to install anything special. It typically just works over SSH but you can use it to automate all kinds of stuff. And actually, I didn't really realize it at first, but Ansible is a Red Hat product. And now IBM owns Red Hat. Or I guess it hasn't completely finalized yet. Let's see what the news says. Yeah, Red Hat press release. IBM to acquire Red Hat, completely changing the cloud landscape and becoming the world's number one hybrid cloud provider. Most significant tech acquisition of 2018 will unlock true value of cloud for business. IBM and Red Hat to provide open approach to cloud, featuring unprecedented security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, IBM acquired Red Hat. So I guess now IBM technically owns the Ansible and there's something called Tower which is sort of like the Jenkins for Ansible specifically. It helps you manage all of your jobs and review them and see how they're doing. So we're not going to mess with Tower or anything like that. We're just going to look at Ansible. Ansible basics. Here we go. I wanted the Ansible documentation. So it looks like they've got a fair amount of documentation here. Developer guide. Module index, get started, playbook. I don't want the videos. Uh, 
let's see. Okay, so it, it, it finished installing here in the pip. So if we do a pip list, we should see Ansible. And we do up here Ansible 278. And it installed some crypto libraries. Jinja templates. Interesting. Jinja is a templating language that's often used with Flask. And Django template language is based off of Jinja too. So they must use Jinja templates to do some string replacement. Paramico does SSH in Python. Uh, more crypto. More crypto. YAML. YAML setup files. Okay. So nothing too fancy there. So we've got the Ansible documentation. I'm going to open up that one. Installation. I'll open up that one. Getting started. And playbooks and inventory. Those are all the pages I think I'm going to want. And I'm going to go ahead and make a folder for bookmarks called Ansible. Just in case I need to come back to any of these. Okay. So here's the official documentation. It looks like they've got quite in-depth documentation. I always enjoy looking at, and it looks, it looks kind of like it was generated with Sphinx. Does it say? It looks like it was generated with Sphinx. And that wouldn't surprise me because Sphinx is the Python, well, docutils and restructured text are the standard Python documentation tools. You can use them for other things. But if you've ever been to read the docs, Sphinx is the tool that does that, and that's all restructured text. And read the docs, all the things that they they generate are with Sphinx typically. Well, not always, I don't think, but typically. Anyway, that's a good sidetrack there. But I always enjoy looking at technical documentation. I like technical writing, and... Documentation is a huge part of that, right? So we'll see how it is, and it looks pretty thorough. So installation guide, I think we've already covered that. We've already got it installed, so we can skip that. We'll go to the using Ansible user guard quick start. There we go. I want to get started quickly. Oh, and it's a video, a video that's 13 minutes long. I want something quicker than that. Let's see, forward, now that you've read the installation, your first commands. Okay. Edit or create etc Ansible hosts. I'll let me make this bigger. So it tells us we need to define some hosts with, okay, and SSH keys should be set up already. So I guess we don't have to, we probably don't have to use their host file, we can probably use our own. Ansible, oh, so does it, does it just create an executable script called Ansible? Okay, so we pip installed Ansible and it actually created something called Ansible. Now if we just do python-m Ansible and invoke it as a module, will it do the same thing? No, it says there is no module named Dunder main. Okay, so they have a launch script that I guess they want you to use to do at least some things. Let's go back up to the top of the help, the help output. Usage, Ansible, host pattern. Okay. Define and run a single task playbook against a set of hosts. Okay, so that makes sense. Like, let's try and run an SSH command against a remote host and maybe just get the disk usage. So if you do df-h, yeah, you'll get a list of all the disk usage in a help uh, readable format. And we'll just maybe we'll try and do that. Yeah, so here it says Ansible all, and then it just has it run a command. So that would, I guess, run against all of the hosts in your etc hosts file. Um, so let's go back. Is there a... Uh, there's, there shouldn't be a man file, yeah. Um, Ansible. Let's do it through less. So I wonder if we can just give it a... Yeah, dash i. i for an inventory file. 
Okay, so how do we make an inventory file? Uh, Ansible inventory file? Okay, working with inventory. Oh, I guess I already opened this one up in the other tab. Okay, so let's jump to that one. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and open this all up in PyCharm, so I'm not doing everything in this in this GNOME terminal. And let's give that a minute to load up. I'm going to take a drink of water. Alright, <clears throat> the tip of the day from PyCharm is... If the cursor is between a set of parentheses of a method call, pressing Control p brings up a list of valid parameters. I already knew that one, but that's actually a really helpful one. So if you, if you don't know the parameters, you can just press Control p and it'll pop up and tell you what's, what the parameters are. And this, this project is the one that we were working on last time, Pi Game of Life. And if you've never seen the Game of Life, it's John Conway's Game of Life. It's a cellular automata, automaton. I'm not sure I say it, but it's um, it's a Python implementation of Game of Life in Pygame. You can go check out the other stream if you're interested in that. So we actually want to go ahead and open the project that we're working on now, which is our Ansible examples. And PyCharm should automatically detect the VN directory inside of our project and set that to be the default interpreter. Now we'll, we'll double check it and you can see down here it's indexing. So we'll just give it a minute to let it finish indexing. All oh, Mythic says, sorry can't stay this time. Good night and good luck. Thanks Mythic, glad you stopped by. Okay, so it's done indexing. Let's go to File Settings. We'll go down to Project and Project Interpreter. And it looks like it did. It did default to the virtual environment in the, in the directory. So we're good there. We didn't even have to set that. Okay, so we've got a terminal. We've got, let's create, I guess, a host file, right? We'll call it uh, Inventory Example. And is it a YAML file? Or is it, we'll just call it a .txt for right now because I'm not positive. So Ansible works against multiple hosts in your infrastructure at the same time. It does this by selecting portions of systems listed in Ansible's inventory, which defaults to being saved in the location Etsy Ansible hosts. Okay, well I don't want to use the default one. Yeah, I want to specify it with dash i. So that's gonna be, I'm gonna start a readme and that's probably going to be my first note. Um, specify inventory file. Because this is going to be something that is really important with uh, dash i flag. We'll say example ansible dash i inventory dot whatever txt. We'll, we'll update this in a minute. Uh, let's see, let's give it a title. Ansible examples. Okay, so let's go back here. Not only is the inventory configurable, but you can also use multiple inventory files at the same time, or pull inventory from dynamic or cloud sources. YAML, INI, oh, it, okay, it supports different formats. YAML and INI. INI files are real easy because they just start with um, the section, so we call it like main servers, and then you know X Y Z. You call them dev servers, something like that. INI files are pretty intuitive in that regard. I think you do uh, equal. Yeah, we'll we'll go with the INI file. I think YAML's okay. It's not bad, but. I know it's a little easier to remember how to work with. Working with dynamic inventory. Oh no, I don't really care about that. I just want to use a regular file. Okay, the inventory file can be in one of many formats, de 
depending on the inventory plugins you have. For example, the format is I and I. Yeah, so they've got uh, one in the global, and then a couple. Okay, so basically exactly how I had. So what I'm going to do here is um, production servers. I mean, I'll be a little verbose, I guess, and say minecraft.devdungeon.com and www.devdungeon.com and dev servers. I don't really have one I want to do anything with, so we'll just go with that. Okay, a YAML version would look like this. That's okay. To make things explicit, you can, okay, you can add a port, no problem. Um, why not? Just to keep it as an example. Okay, so... No, wait, now what is this? You can also describe hosts via variables. It, okay, do you have to prefix it with Ansible? I don't, I mean, I don't think you would. But maybe that would be more interesting. Maybe let's try that. So you can do Minecraft, and you can say how does just host equals that. Host equals that. Um, why not? We'll, we'll just try it like that. We'll see how that works. And, okay, yeah. So that way, you can probably refer to them by that nickname in the front. Oh, this is cool. If you're adding a lot of hosts within a similar pattern, you can do this. So it looks like you can do... It's not quite a regular expression. But you can do numeric ranges and letter ranges. I wonder if you could do regular expressions. You can also select the connection type. Okay. No, see, I feel like... I feel like this... These names are actually important. Where they say uh, Ansible port equals this, Ansible host equals that. Since they're re... I'm just gonna be safe. And Ansible for it. We'll leave the other one different and we'll see what happens. We'll see if it airs out or let's use custom ones. Okay, values passed in the INI format key value syntax are not interpreted as Python literal strings, but as a string. Oh no, I'm sorry. Not as a structure, but as a string. For example, var equals false, we could do string equals to false. Okay, so they're all strings, that's fine. It's good to know though. Host variables. As described above, it is easy to assign variables that we use later. No, okay, so they do look like, they do look like you can just call it whatever you want. So we'll just go with host and forward. Group variables. Interesting. I don't need to do group variables right now, but it's good to know you can do that. Splitting out hosts. Okay, I think I think I've done enough to, to get it, give it a shot. So now the uh, okay, getting started. I just your first commands. I just want to run one real quick. Ansible uh, then uh, dash n ping. Okay, so let's try Ansible, and then we'll do dash i our host file inventory example. Well, let's rename it dot i and i to at least be clear and give it a helping hand and get the syntax highlighting I suppose okay so we'll do ansible dash i inventory example and then they did what dash m ping I guess that's kind of a built in a built in command so we'll just ping all of our hosts missing target hosts oh do I need to tell it do I need to tell it to use a specific group let me try removing the group and see if that does anything. Oh no, I think I still need to specify all is the problem. So you have to tell it all hosts. There we go. Okay, so that that worked, sort of. 
It says unreachable, which which doesn't seem right. So let me let me try setting Ansible host and just see if that makes a difference and see if those names are are specific. Now, why does it? Do they need to be in quotation marks? No. See, it, it doesn't like having two variables on a line like that in the syntax highlighting. So am I doing something wrong? Or is that how they did it up here still? Oh, let me go back to the inventory page. Let me go back up to the top pretty much. Yeah, so... Now when you run it, do you have to give it... Oh, there we go. One of them worked. Oh, so when it does the ping, it's not just doing a ping. It's not doing like an I ICMP, IMCP? Is it ICMP or IMCP? ICMP? Okay, ICMP. <laughs> Get to C, okay, whatever. Uh, it's not just doing a ping, it's actually doing an SSH connection. So it, it's maybe a little confusing, but I have the SSH key set up for the Minecraft server, that's why it's succeeding. I don't have the SSH key set up for the WWW server on this on this virtual machine. So that's good to know. It The, the command is working. Okay. So, let's tr let me copy that into the readme and do like that. And I don't think I need a special note about that. I'll see that. Um, example of pinging all hosts in inventory. SSH connect. Okay. Cool. So, we verify we can do an SSH connection and... Actually, I'm gonna undo these and see if those... So if I do it again, will it will it break? Yeah. Missing target host. So these, these names do seem to be important. Oh no, wait, I just ran the command wrong again. Hold on, let me try this, uh, dash all M. Now, wait, this is the one that's working. Let me take the one that's working and, and turn it off. Yeah, so now it's... Can't resolve host name Minecraft. Okay, so it's definitely, definitely, 100%. These need to be named Ansible or Ansible host. Okay, just needed to be clear about that. So that's fine. Let me set this one up too to be Ansible. Oops, Ansible host and Ansible port. How? Okay. Okie dokie. Now, now we're okay. So the SSH is just a normal, normal SSH. You can do SSH key gen to generate a key if you need to. And then if you need to copy it to a remote host, you can use SSH dash copy ID. And that's all there is to that. Then you have it all set up. And so like I can SSH to minecraft.devdungeon.com and it just connects me. Because I have my keys all set up. Yeah. Why not? We should uh, go ahead and upgrade it while we're there, huh? Get those security updates. Anyway. So we got it. We can run a command now. Let's run a custom command. Let's let's do an SSH um, and run a custom command. Now can I just say okay? Here we go. Dash A. Let me go back to the terminal. Now let's look for dash A and see what that is. Dash dash a module arguments okay so I guess by default it just runs an SSH command and you can tell it what to run so let's try this let's try ansible inventory 
all, because we want to target all of our hosts in there. Well, actually, let's just try one. Let's just say Minecraft and use that variable, that nickname we gave it. So let's Ansible Minecraft and let's give it the argument of df-h and let's see how the disk usage is doing. So it should be SSH connecting and boom! There's the output. Okay, and it even labeled it here. And we can even see how is it doing. 35%? 32, okay, cool. Very good, so let's see how the memory's doing. Let's do free dash h. Okay, so now we're just running SSH commands. That's actually pretty straightforward, so I'm gonna copy that as a reference. And I'm gonna put that in my readme. Oh, uh, what is this? Um, okay. So back in the readme, we'll just do um, run command via SSH, just an example like that. So we're doing pretty good now. Now what is this? Are they specifying two things for it to do? Oh no, they're giving it an environment variable, I guess. So you can specify which version of Python to run if you want. Host key checking. Okay, if you want to disable host key checking, you can. It, I'd better, you'd better leave that on. Um, you can set that in the environment too. No problem. Okay, so I guess the next step is, yeah, working with the playbooks. So now from here we can we can ping them, we can manage our host files. So let me see, can we do it by a group? So let me see if I do if I just say ansible on my production servers, for example. So instead of saying all or my nickname, what if I give it the group name? Okay, it does. So you can just use all server nickname or group name. Very very intuitive, very nice, actually. Okay, so let's try... What have we done? We, we run a remote SSH command. We know how to execute basically anything we want here. We can just put in any kind of command we want there. And so, what about these playbooks? Playbooks are Ansible's configuration, deployment, and orchestration language. They can describe a policy you want your remote systems to enforce, or a set of steps in a general IT process, yeah. If Ansible modules are the tools in your workshop, playbooks are your instruction manuals. Oh, uh, so I think we need to back up and look at modules then. So we've, we're just using built-in modules. Right, so there's the ping module, and I guess the default one, let's see what the Ansible default module is, because we're not specifying the module here, so I'm guessing the default one would be something like SSH command or something, so you would, like, if you were to be explicit, you'd just say, like, dash M SSH command, and that would be the module. Here we go, working with modules. Ansible ships with the number of modules. Yeah, so these are the smaller building blocks. Before we build a playbook, we should look at how to implement a module. Ansible ships with the number of modules. Yeah, and we just looked at a couple, the ping and the SSH command. That can be executed directly on remote hosts or through playbooks. Users can also write their own modules. These modules can control system resources like services, packages, files, executing system commands. Okay, so maybe, like, if I wanted to write uh, an Ansible thing to back up my Minecraft server, I'd probably write modules to do the specific things that I wanted to do. Okay, should you develop a module? That's a nice, okay, that's, um... Let's go to the next page. Introduction modules, also referred to as task plugins or library plugins, are discrete units of code 
that can be used from the command line or in a playbook task. Okay, so we, we've been doing, we've been executing the modules directly on the command line, but we can use a playbook to basically do several of them in a row, I guess. Okay, let's review how we execute three different modules from the command line. Ansible web servers dash M service, and then dash A, so that's the argument for the module, I see. So the arguments you pass are gonna be specific to the module that you passed, or the module you're using. And in this case, there's a service one, I guess it's checking system D and seeing if a service is running or not. Uh, there's a ping and then, oh, and command must be the default one. Yeah, so let's try this again. So we did dash A, free, let's try dash, oh wait, let's do dash M command. Yeah, so command looks like it's the one that will just run an SSH command. Oops, so I'm gonna put both of those just to be clear. And we'll put the module before the argument. Uh, module command. Okay. Very good. So, from each module supports taking arguments. Nearly all modules take key, key equal value format, space delimited. Okay. Okay, I can get behind that. That sounds good. From playbooks, Ansible modules are executed in a very similar way. Okay, we're gonna skip that because we're gonna look at playbooks in a minute. Ansible doc, oh. I'm a huge fan of documentation. So being able to get the docs for a module is very awesome. And being able to write them and make them easily accessible are also cool. Is also cool. So let's see. Um, command, can we do an Ansible doc on command? Awesome. So this is the default one that runs an SSH command. And so I wonder if this is written in restructured text or, or how it's written. So the command module takes command okay and it's got a list of the arguments oh okay yeah there's a couple arguments like you can tell it where to where the working directory is oh there's some examples it looks like okay cool so that would be a good place to pull up examples and I'm actually definitely gonna put that in this readme here so um, pull up documentation on a module like like so pull up documentation and examples let's be clear some of them some of them may have examples which is very nice and oh ansible doc dash l you can list all of them oh that's very cool so i wonder if i could just do ansible dash l oh wait no, i'm in the wrong let's there we go. So if I do ansible-l, no, so let's try ansible-doc-l like it suggested. Oh wow, there's a ton of modules. Wow, there's way more modules than I was anticipating. Hold on, I'm gonna browse through those because that is a huge list of modules. Um, okay, so we'll start with uh, list modules. Okay, so you can list the modules, and then you can pull up the documentation and learn about them and get examples. And then you can run a module like this. Okay, perfect. That's a good workflow for the README. And yeah, let's let's look through that because there was a ton. So Ansible doc dash L. Okay, so a lot of them were kind of specific to certain boxes and OSs and appliances so most of them are not going to be applicable but that is interesting a10 networks uh config snapshots for aci i'm not sure what aci stands for a okay acme accounts aos app repository okay add or remove app repositories manage app packages i guess so you can do you can run updates 
That'd be a good one. Um, networking stuff. AWS. AWS config. S3 buckets. Okay, so you can do cloud stuff. Uh, big IP. Azure. CloudFront. Uh, Cron. There's one called Cron. That one's probably going to be real useful. Manage Cron D entries and Cron tab entries. Yeah, that'd be really nice to check cron jobs, set them, sanity check, like pull pull reports periodically to do audits, see if anything should get turned off. Um, what else do we have? Deconf, debconf, debug, print statements during execution. Oh, that's probably going to be a really useful one in the playbooks. Digital Ocean. Docker, a bunch of Docker ones. EC2, more AWS stuff. Uh, EOS. Oh, Arista EOS devices. I'm not familiar with those. Some kind of networking device, I think. What else we have? We're only in the G's. Okay, I'm gonna GitLab, Grafana. I'm gonna go a little faster. G Unicorn, Homebrew, Hostname, HT Passwords. Some IBM, iOS, IPA, JBoss, Jenkins, Kubernetes, manage Kubernetes, okay, Lambda, AWS Lambda, Linode, uh, cool, uh, Linode, I like Linode a lot, manage instances on Linode, very cool, DigitalOcean and Linode, Azure, all your cloud providers, MySQL database, Mongo, MySQL users, Nagios, NetApp, Netscaler. Now when you're going through big lists like this, a lot of times the most important ones are the ones, so like you see there's a bunch of NOx, like all these with the same prefix, the important ones are these one-offs, these little one-offs that, that stand out, those are usually the little gems. So you want to Okay, open SSL. A bunch of OS. Oh, that's OpenStack. OpenStack stuff? Okay, so that's good for... That would be useful for a lot of general cloud stuff. Generic OS package manager? That's interesting. So you can just do, like, package update. And I guess it, it, will, it won't care if you've got yum or apt or whatever. That's interesting. Pan OS? Palo Alto stuff? Okay, Palo Alto's cool. Pip, manage pip dependencies, Postgres. Okay, RabbitMQ, Rackspace, more S3, SE Linux. Okay, shell, execute commands and nodes. Subversion, Terraform. Twilio. Twilio is like a voice and SMS provider. VMware, VMware. Windows, Windows stuff. Yarn, XML, Yum. Okay, so it took a while to go through all those, but I think it's really important to get a, a kind of a grasp on all the things that it can do. So it can do a lot of things right out of the box. We probably won't have to implement a lot of modules. So let's take a brief look at how one would develop a module. Should you develop a module? Yeah, okay, so then I guess because they've got so many and I guess people develop their own third party ones and publish them, so should you develop a module? Developing into modules is easy, but often it isn't necessary. Before you start writing, ask, does a similar module already exist? Okay, and does a pull request already exist? Okay. Should you blah blah blah? Yeah, okay, let's skip that. Uh, let's see, just say um, Ansible uh, module example. Here we go, this is from the official docs. Building a simple module, let's build a very basic module to get and set system time. No, we'll do one that does something different, but let's see, we are going to use Python here, but any language is possible. Okay, now Python, interesting. So you can make modules. Oh, 
so you can write the modules in Go, or whatever, or it can, the module can just be a shell script. Interesting. Interesting. I, w I thought the modules would all have to be Python. So that's very interesting because I do I do like Ruby for certain things. And I showed you I did a whole stream on a on a Minecraft a thorough Minecraft backup script using Ruby and why I think Ruby's a really good fit for shell scripts. Sometimes you do just want a shell script and sometimes you want the Python and maybe you need to do something in Go when you need it to be fast. So that is a very nice piece of information. And it, yeah, it just says only file I.O. and standard out are required. Okay. Now Python, now, now, Python Ansible modules contain some extremely powerful shortcuts that all core modules use. But first we're going to look at build a module the very hard way. Ooh, I'm shaking in my boots. The reason we do this is because modules written in any language other than Python are going to have to do exactly this. We'll show the easy way later. So here's an example. You would never really need to build a module to set the system time. The command module would already be used to do this. Uh, let's just look at the code. Okay, let's go in with this example. We'll use Python. For starters, save this as a file called timetest.py. Okay. All it's doing is outputting some JSON. Okay, so I'm gonna call this uh, my simple module.py. And all it's gonna do is, I guess I gotta import JSON. So it's gonna say dump. Now, what is. Is that the. Is that the actual system command? No, because... Hold on a second. Okay, that, that literally is all it's doing. I was like, wait, is, are they doing something weird? Um, we're gonna, we'll call it, we'll just say message equals hello. We'll, okay, so now we can just do ansible-m my simple module. And we, I guess we need the host, so we'll give it that. And we'll say all. And it should just... The module was not found. Okay, so I'm gonna have to tell it... I wonder if I can just say module... Oh, maybe it's not the .py? Oops. So, hold on, let's see how they tell us how to run it. They probably tell us I need to simmer down Check it out. Okay, testing your module. Dash and yeah, you just okay. I was about to do that one next. So you do dot slash. You tell it specifically. It's right here. This is my file that I want to run. And but now this. Well, hold on. Let's try just the Minecraft server. So I think it's gonna do the SSH. No, hold on a second. What is it? What exactly is it doing? The module was not found. Oh, I guess. Oh, there's a useful test script in the source for testing modules. Well, is there not an easier way? I mean, I guess I'll. I guess I'll try that out. Well, maybe not. Let's just read through this. Okay, look at the code. Oh, so now they're... Yeah, so they're just showing you how you read it from... Now where do the arguments come from? They just come... Okay, so yeah, arguments just come from the normal system arguments. So you can grab them normally, how you would in a bash script or a go file or whatever. Binary modules input. Support for binary modules was added in Ansible 2.2. 2. 
Okay, and we're using 2.7.8, 2 so very cool. When Ansible detects a binary module, it will proceed to simply supply the argument input as a file on argv. Now hold on, it will proceed to supply the argument input as a file that is formatted as JSON. Interesting. So it doesn't pass in all of the separate arguments as argument one, argument two, argument three. It passes in one argument that is the file name? No. I'm confused whether the argument, the one argument is the JSON itself or it's a path to a file. Let me go back up and see what they did here. So... Okay, it is. So up here, read the argument string. RV is the file, and then they're doing a read from the file. So I guess it creates a temporary file, and then they pass it to you, so you gotta read it. Got it. Okay, so that's that's pretty straightforward. Then you gotta parse the JSON. And once you parse the JSON, you can do whatever you want. Common module boilerplate. Yeah. Oh, it looks like they have... They have a template class that you can use. Okay, so that's that's great. I'm actually going to delete this example. Okay, so I'm going to skip the module. Well, we didn't skip it. We looked through it. I'm not going to build a module right now because there were so many, and there are so many third-party ones, but it is good to know roughly how you would build a module. Okay, so you just take the arguments in and out. You can make it, and I guess the important thing that we learned is that a module can be in any language, and it can even be a binary. So you can have a compiled Go Go file or, or whatever. Okay, so we were we were on working with the playbooks. Okay, so we, we took a detour here to check out the modules. So if Ansible modules are the tools in your workshop, Playbooks are your instruction manuals, and your inventory hosts are your raw material. Alright. At a basic level, playbooks can be used to manage configurations. At a more advanced level, they can sequence multi-tier rollouts involving rolling updates and can delegate actions to other hosts. Interacting... blah blah, okay. Yeah, so let's just look at a very simple one and just start to get a grasp on this. Maybe do a sample one. Playbooks are expressed in YAML, that's cool. And have a minimum of syntax. Okay. Excuse me, I'm gonna take another drink of water. Okay, here is a playbook that contains just one play. Okay, so let's try this out. Let's try an um, uh, example playbook dot yaml. And let's, let's look at this sample code they gave us. Hosts, and we'll say, we'll say Minecraft, just to do the one. Variables, um, we don't. I guess, is there a comment in YAML? Okay. Remote user. Nano Dano. Tasks, okay. I guess you can, can you put spaces? Is that okay? We'll find out. Handlers, restart Apache. Service, service, okay. So this is the name of the module, it looks like, and these are the arguments. So you give it... Uh, let's see, we'll start with um, the module ping. And that one doesn't take any arguments. 
left, so I wonder... If we'll, I don't know what we do if there's no arguments. Let's see, do they have an example here? Um, well, well, we'll find out. I'm gonna break this all over the place. And... Okay, we're just gonna see, make sure connection is establishable. Establishable. And... Okay, so we don't want... Okay, so template, I guess that's cool. You can set up a config file according to the host. And that's where the Jinja stuff comes in handy, I bet. The Jinja templates for setting up config files. So we'll just get rid of that one. And what was the other one? It was called command. So we don't want service, but we'll have command. And I'm not sure what... Hold on, let's go back to the Ansible doc. For command. Now what is the argument? Oh, it's argv. Okay, so I guess what would be here is argv. And we'll say free dash h. I think, I think that'll work. Hopefully. Handlers. Mm, name, service, so... This looks just like... The task section. I don't know, we'll, we'll try this one out. So how do you run a playbook? Okay, let's, let's breeze through this. Okay, inventory, past inventory. Oh, you can set the order. Okay, maybe you want to do it backwards. But that's, neat. that's nice to know you can tell it to go in the right order. Or randomize. Task list. Each, ta each play contains a list of tasks. Okay, and so... Like here we have two tasks. Ping and command. Okay, tasks are executed in order one at a time against all machines before moving on to the next task. When running a playbook which which runs top to bottom, posts with failed tasks are taken out of the rotation for the entire playbook. Okay, that's really important to know. So, let's say you had a dozen tasks listed. If it failed on one task, it just stops there, and that one host never gets any other commands run. But what happens? Is there like, is there a real verbose log system? How do we log it out to a file? Actually, yeah, so uh, how to output log to file? Do you just have to pipe the output yourself to a file, or is there, is there like some logging options? Okay, the goal of each task is to execute a module with very specific arguments. Okay, and we just saw that. Modules should be item potent, that is, running a module multiple times in a sequence should have the same effect as running it just once. One way to achieve item potency is to have a module check whether its desired final state has already been achieved. And if that state has already been achieved, to exit without performing any actions. Okay. If all the modules a playbook uses are item potent, then the playbook itself is likely to be item potent. So rerunning the playbook should be safe. That's better, very important to be safe and have some sane defaults. You want to be confident in that. You don't want to be in a state where you're like, Oh man, can I run that playbook or will it screw everything up? It, it, it aired out on three of the hosts, but... It, so they're in a weird state. Can I run the whole thing again? Like, oh no, now we have to manually do all this surgery. Yeah, you want to avoid that for sure. So how do you just execute a playbook? Okay, and so now I want Ansible, and we'll do less, and I want to see playbook, dash dash playbook dir. No, let's see. How do you... Okay, how do you call a playbook? Let's go back up to the top, see if it tells us. Okay, about playbooks. 
working with playbooks, so executing a playbook, that's what I want. Okay, there's there's a, a script called Ansible Playbook that you actually run. Okay, and I guess because you're specifying the hosts and the modules and everything, everything in the YAML file, you don't need to give it any command line arguments except run the run run the playbook. Now what is the F F10? Let's run a playbook using a parallelism. Oh, I guess that means fork. It'll fork 10 instances. I'm guessing that's what the F stands for. If it's talking about parallelism and using F, it's probably forking. And Python can only use one CPU worth of power anyway, per process due to the global interpreter lock, or the GIL. So the only way to achieve truly multi-processor power is to fork and create multiple processes. So that would make sense that that's what it's doing. So now I wonder if I can just put that up at the top like, as a comment. Run with Ansible Playbook of, what is it called? Example Playbook. Okay, so let's try it. Let's try, well, let's try running it before we commit to putting that comment there. Okay, kind of, it kind of worked. Unable to parse Ansible host. Oh, so I guess I do still need to pass it the, I wonder if I can just do that right here with the dash I. Okay, looks like I can. And it's running. And so it's say running play Minecraft, task gathering facts, task make sure connection is establishable, task Ensure Apache is running. Fail. Okay. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. So, now, why did it call this play Minecraft at the top? So it says play Minecraft. Now is that just because that's the hosts? So if I said um, production servers, would it say play production servers okay so this is um, name we'll call it the uh, pinging servers well I guess we can say uh, SSH connect whatever this doesn't really matter uh, but actually we're gonna say check memory that's what it's gonna be check free memory here that's what the free dash h is doing. And now, did that actually work? No, it said command free dash h. No such file or directory. Interesting. So, do I need to tell it? Um, user bin. Let's try that. Okay. Unreachable. Oh, the www is unreachable. That's fine. We know it is. That's okay. We'll see how it behaves when one of them works and one of them doesn't. Okay, public permission denied. So here we scroll up now. It says, yeah, play production servers. Task gathering facts. No, wait a second. Where's that name coming from? I guess that's the default one. It's part of the core. And then, yeah, here's the one we specified saying SSH connect. Now it's probably connecting and then disconnecting. So there's no requirement for this, but just for my example, it's, it's, I'm doing it that way. Um, actually, I wonder if it's smart enough to know that it's just gonna use the existing SSH session or if it does do a whole connect and disconnect. You'd have to check, I guess, the source code for the ping module. Okay, so at the bottom it gives you a play recap and it tells you, okay, failed and unreachable. So that's it. That's good to know. It'll tell you if it couldn't even connect at all. And in this case it said one of the things failed. Okay, so why did that one still fail? Chain commands. Interesting, so it, it uh, let's see, um, 
Ansible playbook run command module. Some, so something is not quite right. Actually, let's see if we can figure this out with our Ansible doc help, uh, Ansible doc help command. And we'll say, yeah, the command module takes the command name followed by a list of space delimited arguments. The command will be executed on the selected nodes. Yeah, okay, so let's go down. Uh, options. Okay, let's see. So maybe it's not... Oh. So is command the one I need to send it and not argv? Let me try that real quick before I go do a Google. Okay, let's run the playbook. Fine. SSH connect should be fine. Check free memory. No, that one's still... It still put the command there, but that's interesting. So you can do command or argv. I like command better. I'd rather just put what I want there. Argv. Yeah, so that's required. Let's see the examples. Okay. Give me an example, please. Name, command. Oh, it's actually whole. It's C O M M A. Oh, here's what I'm doing wrong. It, it just needs to be like that. Okay. Okay, that's... That was the problem, it looked like. So let's give it a run now. Now let's see if it checks the memory. No? No. Oh, permission denied. Oh, it's derp. It's not, uh, I, what I need is user bin bash. <laughs> All I did was slash user slash bin. Um, and it should have been bin bash, but let's try it without the bash now. Okay, so changed. Interesting. Let me try that one. Why, so why does it say changed? So that one failed. No, no, which bash? Bin bash. So, let me see, let me see some more examples. So yeah, you can give it argv if you want. Okay, so what happened? Yeah, return values. I want to know what happens when it comes back. Command. Common return values are listed here. Oh, let's see, is there a standard out? Yeah, I want standard out. Some modules execute, give you standard output, that's what I want. So, how do I get standard out? And, hold on. Return values. That's, hold on, this isn't helpful. Uh, Ansible playbook get return value, standard out. Okay, we're gonna check out the old Stack Overflow for this one. Register... Oh. Okay, so you register the... So you store the output? Is that right? We'll call it, uh... Free output. And then we'll have, um... Output free memory. No, wait, this is gonna be debug with a message of uh, free output like that yes um, wait no hello dot standard out uh, so we'll just call it free hopefully that's not a keyword or anything 
3.standard out. Okay, let's try that and see if that works. Uh-oh. The offending line appears to be here. Uh-oh. I offend I have offended Ansible. <laughs> now what is it? A syntax error in my Ansible? Um Okay, let's let's try how they had it like this. Debug. Oh, it's MSG. We'll just try it like that. Okay, I guess it parsed the YAML without being offended. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm a little new. Cannot execute binary file. What? Why? Mm, interesting. It worked when we did command. It worked when we did it. Let's see, let me try, let me go back to that output, that command. When we did it with the module by itself, it worked. So we know that it, you know, it has the permission to run it. There it is, there it is, beautiful. Output of free memory. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little ugly, but that's okay. We can worry about parsing it or whatever later. But look, do we get the output? And let me see if. Yeah, it's all just one. It's not parsing. It's not breaking the new lines. But that's okay. Let's see if we can. Uh... Ansible debug output break new lines? Is there a way to do that? Mm. Okay, so what, you can put code in there? You can't just call a split? I guess maybe that part does get translated right into Python. So you can call a split. moment of truth. Oh, very cool. Very good. Now we can get a quick look at that. Now, I, now if I wanted to take it further, what I would do is use awk and print the output. Actually, so I wonder if I can just do that like this. Yeah, so we'll do awk. Um, well, we'll do this. We'll grep the line that has the um, the line with the mem. So we want to grab the line that has the mem, and then we want to pass that through awk, and we want to have it uh, print the fourth column one zero uh, one two three four. That's how much is free. Four. Now, let's try that, and actually we can say, um... And we'll say free. So it'd be like, eight, 500 megabytes free. So let's give that a shot. Let's see if it'll, it'll pipe them together and everything without a problem. No... No, it didn't. I hmm. Let's see, Ansible piping multiple shell commands. And I maybe there's maybe I'm missing something where there's a little trick to it. Shell. Oh, so there's a difference between command and shell. Okay, so let's try shell. I guess shell's a little more raw. Let's give it a shot. Oh, yeah, that's much better. 
It, uh, let's see, it left out the... Oh, yeah, let's see, uh... Um, yeah, let's try that. So now the the output of this should say... Now, wait a second. Oh, now... That, sh that should fix it. So now we should get a nice, succinct message that tells us, boom, 157 megabytes free. That's, <laughs> that's not very much, that's not very good, but it's that Minecraft server that's kind of being pushed to the limit right now. But, okay, so that's very cool. This is gonna be, we're gonna call this one um, check memory. Check free memory. Okay. I like it. And we also give it the inventory, right? So inventory that I9. Okay, so we've done a playbook. We've done a playbook that does some custom shell commands, parses the output, prints it out to the screen. So what about like what if I want to copy a file down. I wonder, let's see, let's do ansible doc dash L grep SCP. Let's see if they have a module for copying. Mm, they do, but it's called Juno S SCP, which makes me believe it's specifically for, yeah, Juno S. Is that for Juniper devices or what is that? I'm actually not sure. Doesn't matter. Not important for me right now. Okay, so what do I want to do? I want I do want to maybe copy down copy down a file. So let's see Ansible SCP example. Oh so they have one Oh, okay, so they have a module called copy, is what it is. Copy? Okay, so it's not called SCP, it's called copy, which is nice. So we'll do Ansible doc on copy. So, module copies a file from the local or remote machine to a lo location on the remote machine. Use fetch module to copy my mod files from remote locations to the local box. Okay, so that makes sense. So if I want to push something up to a box, I'll use copy. If I want to pull something down, I'll use fetch. So if I want to pull... Okay, yeah, so you can optionally back up. You can tell it what file you want. Okay, so that's cool. If you want to copy a file down, let's say you want to run a tar so let's see let's let's copy this and make another one so i'm gonna say i'm oops i'm just gonna do Control c Control v and i'm gonna call this one uh backup server i guess i'll be more explicit and i'll call it uh, backup minecraft server and i'm actually going to create a directory now called plays since we have a few of them, and stick them in there. And why don't we go ahead and create a new directory called inventory? Because I think that would be a nice way to break it up right now. And that retry file is not necessary. So let's add a git ignore. And I don't know what that retry file was, but if it makes another one, I don't want it in there. So we'll leave it out with the, the git ignore. We'll leave out the virtual environment too. And I think that's it. I think we're good there. And we can go ahead and initialize a repo here. And how's our readme look? So we'll just say install Ansible with pip. And that was all there was to it pip install ansible. I guess I like using python-m pip just to... 
always be sure. And so, Ansible, yeah. Now, actually one thing I want to put is this command in the readme. Okay, run playbook. You do that like this. Okay, that looks good. Let's check, make sure our, our readme looks like it's rendering well. Ansible examples, install, list the modules, get the documentation on a module, run a module, run other modules, run a playbook. Okay, so that's kind of all the important stuff that we've worked, worked our way up to. And actually, I want to add a couple bookmarks, or at least at least to the main documentation page. So at the bottom we'll say references. And we'll just put that one for now. And maybe Ansible on GitHub. Awesome. And so I actually do want to check out... Oh, they have a whole bunch of examples. And modules. Is there one called modules? Live Ansible modules. Yeah, I wanted to look at this ping one. Oh, where would it be? Ping. Where would you be, ping? If I were ping, where would I be hiding? Mm, no, it wouldn't be under messaging. Utilities? No, oh well. I'm not going to search for it. I don't care that much about how it works. Okay, copy. Boom. So I think we are in really, really good shape. So let's see. What if we wanted, if we wanted to run a custom Python file, then it would just be a matter of creating the module. So how do we pass data between modules? in the play. Would we want to do that through files or would we do that through, I guess we did the register thing, right? So we registered the output, or I guess we registered the the whole thing and then we pulled the output from here. So let's look more into that register thing, Ansible register. Yeah, Ansible register variables. So this is on a website called My Daily Tutorials. We'll see. We'll see how their write-up is. Now, register. I'm interested. Oh, you know what? Yeah, when we did the output here, message equals something so I wonder if we can so when they put the, when they did the debug they just said ver and they dumped the ver we did message I wonder if you can just pass it pass it that without giving it message and if it'll just print the message directly oh um, okay couldn't find it that's because it is in a different directory so, and over here it is, playbooks. I'm not in Windows, what am I doing? There we go. Plays, not playbooks. Sorry Ansible, don't be offended again. And it's not called example, I guess it's called free memory. Okay, hold on check free memory what check free memory dot yaml in plays plays okay no it didn't like that it definitely wants us to give it something so we'll just leave that in there okay what I really wanted to see was Standard out dot lines. No, I want to know what else you can get besides just standard out. 
Oh, okay, so here we go. You get all of these. Standard out is one of the elements that we're pulling out here from the register variable, but it looks like you also get standard error, which is important because a lot of times the helpful messages go there. Uh, standard out, okay. Start and end could be important. Delta could be a useful and the commands and the arguments. Okay, so not much else except for what the command actually was that ran and when it started and when it stopped and stuff. So just a little bit of metadata, but otherwise just standard out. Okay, so that makes sense. And they were saying earlier, if you want to make a module, you can use any language, but it's important that it takes input and output through files because that's how you load it, right? You need the argument variable and then you load the file. So you need file IO and you need standard output. And you need standard output because I guess that is the uh, that is the way you pass data on to the next one. And so like if you wanted to take the output from one command and pass it to another, then you would register it, you know, do this like this, the standard out split, get the thing you need and then run it in your next command. So like in here we'd say like, let's say our command was a variable, we put it in there like that. Uh, let's see, L Lessic Seretny says, nice automation tool. Now I'm just curious, have you used it before? Is that why you say that? Is that why you think it's a nice tool? Or have you just been watching and you think it's nice? It's, it's gaining a lot of popularity and it's something that I've been putting off, really learning, and like really getting familiar with it and understanding it and actually creating my own tools with it. So this that's why I'm sitting down and doing this today. And so like, let's do one where we would say, um, backup file. Yeah, so if, if I wanted to do the Minecraft one, it would be something like this. It would be a uh, backup file. Uh, I guess we could say archive file would be more accurate. So it would be basically uh, tar create file um, slash op slash mc backup dot tar out of, you know, Minecraft slash tar. And then the next one would be um, pull down the backup file. And then that would be the fetch command. And I'm guessing you just fetch it, uh, the name there. And now I wonder how you set just raw variables. Can you just give it a variable and call it, you know, file name is that? And then right here just call file name. So let's see. Variables in playlists. Ansible. Playbook roles and oh, roles and include statements. So roles are something that I think we need to look at. Lissek says, oh you're sick? Oh sorry to hear that. Well get some soup and keep watching. <laughs> Ansible will make you feel better. So playbook roles and include statements. Yeah, so the roles the roles are going to be important, I think. Okay. <laughs> this is the whole this is the whole topic. This is the whole page. This documentation has moved. Their new location is under creating reason. Okay, that's fine. Here we go. Creating reusable playbooks. While it is possible to write a playbook in one very large file. You might start out, out learning playbooks this way. Eventually you'll want to reuse files and organize things. Okay. So I guess you can modularize them and create sub playbooks and import them and call them as, you know, discrete objects. Okay, and Ansible, well, there are three ways to do this. Includes, imports, and roles. 
Includes and imports allow users to break up large playbooks into smaller ones, which can be used across multiple parent playbooks or even multiple times within the same playbook, okay? Roles allow more than just tasks to be packaged together and can include variables, handlers, or even modules and other plugins. Okay, so roles are basically includes plus. Unlike includes and imports, roles can also be uploaded and shared via Ansible Galaxy. Oh. Ansible Galaxy. I guess this is their repository of projects, or of plays, I guess. Jumpstart your automation project with great content from the Ansible community. Galaxy provides pre-packaged units of work known to Ansible as roles. Roles can be dropped into Ansible playbooks and immediately put to work. You'll find roles for provisioning infrastructure, deploying applications, and all the tasks you do every day. Use the search page to find roles. Okay, let's just browse. Let's see. How about security? Firewall. Neat. Firewall. Security. <laughs> There's just a role called Firewall and just a role called Security. Okay, what does it actually do, though? Uh, summary? Description? Security software installation and configuration? Um, that's a bit generic. Let's see. Tor? I wonder what that one... Does it create a service? DevOps? There's nothing really there. Okay, yeah, interesting. I'll, maybe I'll look more at that later. Dynamic versus static. Ansible has two modes of operation for reusable content. Dynamic and static. In Ansible 2.0, the concept of dynamic includes was introduced. Due to some limitations. Okay. Be... Hold on. Due, due to some limitations with making all includes dynamic, the ability to force includes to be static was introduced into one. Because the include task became overloaded to encompass both static and dynamic syntaxes, and because the default behavior of an include could change based on other import options, in 2.4 they introduced include versus import. Okay, yeah, because that must have been confusing before that. So I can understand the reason for doing that, even though those names are pretty similar. It's too bad they just didn't have, like, include dynamic and include static. Maybe that would have been a little easier. Okay, if you, if you use any import task, import playbook, import task, it will be static. If you use include, it will be dynamic. Okay. Well, I'm going to get that mixed up, but it's good to know that there's differences. Yeah, so what is the difference? The two modes are pretty simple. Ansible pre-processes all static imports during playbook parsing time. Okay. Dynamic includes are processed during runtime at the point in which the task is encountered. Okay. So static means it's done once when it starts up. Dynamic means it runs... It runs when the task is encountered, okay. When it comes to Ansible task options like tags and conditional statements when. Okay, so I think that's all we need to know there. So trade-offs and pitfalls between includes and imports. There's some advantages and trade-offs. The primary advantage is looping. Well, the primary advantage of include is looping. When a loop is used with an include, the include task will be executed once for each item in the loop. Okay, yeah, so performance, just gotta keep that in mind. You want it running once or each time. Okay, loops in playbooks, conditionals in playbooks, and variables. Yeah, that's what I was looking for, variables. Creating valid variable names, defining valid variables in inventory, defining variables in... Okay. 
So you can do it in the inventory or in the playbook. Oh, vares. Okay, so you do vares. And I guess we did that up here. So that's where you just set whatever. So here's where we would say um, backup file path. And in that case, we can do um, Minecraft backup dot tar. And then we can say, yeah, create zip file. And then what? Pipe it through gzip? Yeah, that looks good. And then, so the file's actually going to be... No, that should be fine. And then actually what we want to download is... Backup file path... Dot gz. And then here we can do... Replace this with a variable too. So then if we want to change the path or whatever, and obviously you can pull out the whole directory, do the change directory and all that, but... Okay. Cool. I just wanted an example of how to do a variable in general. Okay. And yeah, you just use them like that. That's that's Jinja templating stuff where you do the, the brace, brace, curly brace, curly brace. What do you call it? Double curly brace, uh... A durly brace. Okay. Hey, wait, a YAML gotcha. The YAML syntax requires that if you start a value with blank, you quote the whole line. Interesting. Maybe. Maybe that's why this one broke last time? Okay. And I guess it wouldn't hurt to quote that one too, right? So let's try this again. And let's see if it actually... And we don't need um, that. We'll just do like that. So that's how you back up the server or something like that. Now here, oh, that did work. No, wait. Yeah, that did work. Okay, interesting. So the problem that I had before was that this um, wasn't quoted. But that's okay, so that looks good. Is there anything else that I had on my list? I think that really covers all of the the stuff that I wanted to learn and figure out about Ansible. So maybe we can look at the roles a little bit more and see... Let's see here. So... Roles... It didn't... Interesting, let's uh... User guide... Where? Let's see. Let's let's use Google since there we go. Now we're back into documentation, and we found the roles, and it's under working with playbooks, creating reusable playbooks. Okay. So when you create a role, you're creating a whole directory, and you're dumping all that stuff in there. Roles are ways of automatically loading certain variables tasks and handlers and I need to take a side and see what is the handler I didn't I didn't catch what the handler was so handler oh let's do here oh no I don't want that let's go back to here and handler handlers running operations on change As we've mentioned, modules should be idempotent and can re and can relay when they have made a change on the remote system. Playbooks recognize this and have a basic event system that can be used to respond to change. Okay. These notify... Oh, I see. 
So if you if you add a notify to your task, then it'll trigger a handler. These notify actions are triggered at the end of each block of tasks in a play, and will only be triggered once, even if notified by multiple different tasks. Okay, so you get one notify at the end. For instance, multiple resources may indicate that Apache needs to be restarted. I see, so in this case they're saying notify that these services need to be restarted, and at the end their handler is actually going to handle restarting those things. Okay, the things listed in the notify section are called handlers. Handlers are lists of tasks. Not really any different from regular tasks. Okay. If nothing handles a, if nothing notifies a handler, it won't run. Okay, that's fine. I see. So you basically create a handler, and you're basically just creating a task. So instead of tasks, you would have handler, just like they have here, handlers, and then you, you give it the name, and then what you want it to do. In this case, you could replace service with shell and do shell system CTL restart. Okay, very nice. So notify and handlers are basically just triggers and callbacks. Or some, something kind of like that. Uh, you trigger, you, you notify that a handler should be called at the end of the tasks. Okay. I'm not going to do an example of that, but that's really nice to know. If if I run into a use case for that, I will I will I will use that. So I think that was really good. We learned how to do this and say okay. So maybe we should try this. I'm actually going to try this. Um, back it up slash. What is this going to be? Ansible backup. Ansible Minecraft backup. Okay. So that's the file we're going to create on the remote server. And so we're going to archive the server, archive the Minecraft server folder, and gzip it, and then pull it down. And it should just pull it down to our local directories for wherever I run it. So right now I'm in the working directory, which is fine. So let me try this. Let me go back to the plays. But I don't want to run check free memory. I want to run backup Minecraft server. And I want to run it. Now let's see if I, if I set it up right. Okay, failed. Oh. Consider using the unarchive module rather than running tar. So what did I do wrong was my failed source and destination are required. Create file. This is the file that I'm cre Oh, did this did this variable not go through? It's, it's as if this uh, was left out completely. Do I need the spaces? I, I don't think I need the spaces there, but... Let me... Let me go back and check uh, Ansible using variables in place. And let me make sure I didn't, I didn't overlook something. Defining variables in a playbook. There's like that, okay. Using variables, yeah, just like that. Maybe I did need the space, I guess we'll find out. Let me run it again. Okay. Source and desk required. So... Let me take off that. And let me just verify that this, this tar command will work. 
Oops. Okay, yeah. No such file or directory. Okay, my off to Minecraft backups. Oh, it's Minecraft underscore backups. That's the directory name. Okay, I wonder if that was it. I wonder if it'll work now. Let's see. No, it gave the same thing. It's as if this is not working. This, this variable is not getting output. You can define. You can define variables directly in a playbook. Vars blank blank. Okay. I mean, do I need to? I don't think I need to quote it, but I will just to be safe. And maybe, maybe I need to quote this whole thing too. Would that be weird with having the double quotes like that? I don't know, let's see. Using variables. Once you define variables, you can use them in your playbook using Jinja 2 templating system, yeah. Durly brace, and then the name of the variable. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not... Am I missing anything? So, at the top they had what? Creating very valid variable names. Before you start using variables, it's important to know what are va valid variable names. Variable names should be letters, numbers, and underscores. Variables should always start with a letter. Okay. Well, I did that. False message source and dist are required. Um, okay, let me go back and try. If I fix this, will it start working? Yeah. So that works. Yeah, it's like it's this variable's not coming through. I mean, did I have a typo or something? Mm. Okay. Am I, did I put this in the wrong... Play? No, I'm in the right play. Oh! Yeah, yeah, I'm in the right play. Why does it say source and dest are required? Well, okay, let's try commenting that one out and just do the fetch. Since we, we just created the file, we should know it exists. Failed, source and dest are required. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna Ansible source and dest are required. Let's see, if, am I miss? Does it know that I'm downloading something and it needs to know where? Now what... What is going on here? Copy module doesn't work. We're just looking through some... Some examples. I see. So fetch needs the source and the destination. I don't just say fetch that. I actually need source and dest here. I just do a dot. Let's see if that works any better. Mm, 
Closer. Yeah, uh, file not found. Oh yeah, it didn't find the gzip because it didn't actually zip it up. But it's working now. It seems to be working. I guess it's a big file. Yeah, so it's downloading. Interesting. It downloaded the whole directory structure. Okay, I'll have to look a little bit more into how fetch is configured. But that worked. That worked, so that's a good thing. Now let's see if we can get this, uh, the tar, the tar part to work. I'm just gonna cancel that. So let's run it again and just see if we can get the tar, the tar command to work. Oh, and it did work. So you know what, the whole time it, it was probably just the uh, fetch command that was erroring out. But now, let me try this, run it through gzip, and try and pull down the gzip version. Okay, now if I run it, this should do the whole shebang. It should do the whole backing up the server and pulling it down. Yeah. Uh-oh. It couldn't find... Oh, you know what? It's because I already output the file. So what I'm going to do is pipe it through gzip. Oh no, wait, 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 that's... that should be right, right? Let me... let me try it. Let me just Google it real quick. Uh, tar and gzip piped together. Do I have to do gzip and then do like an angle bracket and tell it what file? Yeah, I guess I do. Okay, so that's gonna be backup file path. Dot gz. Okay, so now it should... Tar it up. And download it. Now gzip is a little weird. Did it... Oh, did it, did it work? Yeah, it downloaded uh, the whole thing really fast. Well, let me see, because that was a bit too fast for 500 megabytes. Yeah, it's only 20 bytes. Okay, so my my whole gzip thing, I, I'll probably just break it out into a separate file. Um, so I would say, like, we do another one. I'm not going to do it right now, but we'll say um, gzipping archive, and then... I guess before you gzip it, you have to um, remove existing gzip file if it exists, because gzip will will be weird. It'll it'll error out and have a prompt and be like, "Oh, hey, this file already exists. Do you want me to override it?" You can probably pass pass yes. You can probably do like a yes yes to gzip, and maybe that'd work. But whatever. I'm just going to leave that as a to-do for later, but we got the tar and the pull working, or the fetch rather. We got an example to just go pull the memory from all of our hosts. We know how to get the help, so we know how to install Ansible, list all the modules, get all the help for the modules. We looked at building a module, and then we can execute the modules, we can organize a bunch of modules in a playbook, we can reuse playbooks, we can import playbooks. Okay. Awesome. So I'm gonna delete this. I don't need that. And now this retry. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Okay, so now let's do get status. Let's add everything. I think this was very, very helpful for me. I know, at least for sure, going in with little, very, very little Ansible knowledge. Um, working through this, I learned a lot, and I feel much more confident being able to implement and use Ansible.
to do all kinds of tasks. Okay, so let's create a new repository under Dev Dungeon, and I'm going to call it Ansible Examples. Simple, uh, basic Ansible examples for beginners. Well, I'll just say for reference. Okay, and it's created. Let's copy the SSH path and add it as a remote. Get remote add origin. Get push, and we'll go ahead and set the upstream origin master. Oh, I guess I need to commit. And we'll just say, um, oh, it, it defaulted to nano. And we'll just say basic working examples. Oh, actually, one thing I do want to do is add a link to the stream. So, yeah, let's go ahead and copy the link to that. And here we'll say this is the Ansible documentation and live coding of building this code repo. Okay. That looks good. And git commit. There's a typo in there, but that's okay. And I thought I set the upstream. No, I guess I haven't pushed yet. Okay, so now if we go back and check it out here, we've got, oops. Okay, so we've got our documentation of examples. Now, if I didn't look at this for a while, okay, back maybe months later or whatever, this would, this would be enough to kind of get me back into the groove and so now now I have some of my own examples great this is a really good starting place to launch and start building more complicated things so as I build more complicated things I think modules might come into play building custom modules and again the great part about that is that you can write them in Go shell scripts Python Ruby whatever you want those are totally agnostic it just needs to be able to read a file and output the standard out. And I guess ideally you may just pass out JSON, maybe JSON would be the best way to pass data to the next the next one. But anyway, I hope anybody out there following along found this helpful and learned some things. If you have not already joined the Discord, go to devdungeon.com and on the right sidebar there's a join me on Discord link. There's also a link to buy my book, Security with Go. Great read. Recommend it. Highly recommend it. Check out the blog. What else? There's the YouTube channel you're on. Go ahead and subscribe if you like the stream and you want to check out the daily live streams. And there's the GitHub. It's github.com slash devdungeon if it loads up. We have a Minecraft server at minecraft.devdungeon.com. And I think that's about it. So I hope you all enjoyed it again and have a good night.